Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya combo deck featuring four copies of Danitha Benalia's Hope. The 5 mana 4 4 legendary human knight from Dominaria has first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. And when it enters the battlefield, you may put an aura or equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield attached to Danitha. So, what are some of the most powerful things we can do with Danitha in Explorer? Well, there's Colossification, the 7 mana enchantment aura, giving a creature plus 20, plus 20, although when it enters the battlefield we have to tap enchanted creature so we won't necessarily be able to block with Danitha the turn we cheated in play but then on the following turn we can attack as a 24-24 with first strike vigilance and lifelink so gonna make it impossible for any opposing decks to race we also have prodigious growth as another expensive aura giving plus seven plus seven and trample so now after giving Danitha plus 20 plus 20 with classification we can also give trample so our opponent can chum block to survive and then finally one copy of helm of the host which we can also put in play with Danitha either from hand or graveyard and then we don't have to pay the expensive five mana equip cost and Helm says at the beginning of combat on your turn create a token that's a copy of equipped creature except the token isn't legendary if the equipped creature is legendary and the token also gains haste so we can repeatedly make 4-4 hasty Danithas which can also potentially bring back auras from the graveyard so that's a fun value chain as well and then uh, the other part of the combo, if we don't draw Danitha, is Storm Herald, which can also easily kill the opponent on turn 4 if we have the right draw. A 3-2 with haste is that when it enters the battlefield returns any number of aura cards from our graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures we control, so we don't even have to attach them to the Storm Herald itself. And then we have to exile those auras at the beginning of the next end step, and if those auras leave the battlefield we also have to exile them instead. So Storm Herald, of course, if we bring back Colossification, won't be able to attack right away because it will be tapped so we'll have a 23 powered storm herald just kind of sitting there and that's where we also need our four copies of thud a one mana sorcery as an additional cost to cast it we have to sacrifice a creature and then thud deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target so now we can sacrifice a 23 powered storm herald to kill the opponent on the spot and we can do that as early as turn four in this deck as we have plenty of two mana and three mana discard effects to put classification in the graveyard at 2 mana there's Cathartic Reunion as an additional cost to discard 2 cards to draw 3 and Discovery does the same while also gaining 2 life and then we also have 4 copies of Careful Cultivation we can channel it for 1 and a green on turn 2 to discard it and make a 1-1 human monk token that taps for green but it also counts as an enchantment aura that we can maybe bring back from the graveyard giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 3 and to reach so that's just an additional aura we can maybe get back with our Storm Herald at no real additional cost since we're still happy to play a 2 mana ramp card that's more difficult for the opponent to interact with at sorcery speed and then at 3 mana there's also Seize the Spoils which discards one card to draw two and also makes a treasure token so that can also give us a small mana boost to make it easier to maybe play Danitha and Thud in the same turn which can also require a lot of mana otherwise and then the mana base doesn't have room for any fancy utility lands just four copies of Jetmir's Garden for mana fixing can also be cycled late in the game and then we've got all 12 pathways as well as Stomping Ground as our shock land of choice and then one of each basic in case of opposing copies of Field of of Ruin or Assassin's Trophy. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing the big expensive auras, but we have triple looting effect to hopefully find one. I'll try it. And then a Thud plus Storm Herald means we only need four mana to pull off the combo if we find Colossification. So definitely gonna need red. And then this can be played on white. One third can go now, even though it will let the opponent know what we're up to. And there's classification, perfect, so we're setting up for a turn 4 kill. There's our lands. So yeah, everything is in place, I guess we can discovery first. Opponent potentially a Transmogrify deck. And then next turn, double red, Herald plus Thud. So our opponent will need some instant speed removal to interact. 
Jugan defends the temple. I guess they still have a man available with a briefcase. But unless there's some instant speed removal here, opponent's dead. Thirty power, and that's thirty damage to the face. Nice and easy. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing most of our combo pieces. At least we have a thud. And uh, yeah, I guess double looting effect to keep digging. So we'll give it a shot. Can play turn two cultivation as well to accelerate our mana. And there's a Storm Herald. Okay. So now we just need a Colossification to discard. Put on black green with a turn two innkeeper. Another Storm Herald we can discard. Although the question is whether we want to play Cultivation. I think it's worth it since next turn we'll be able to potentially both Reunion and Discovery. And then turn after maybe set up the kill. Although I guess never mind since we will have double green next turn which doesn't cast Discovery and Reunion. Okay, so for now, Reunion, Discarding, Heralds, and a land. Finding a bunch of Discoveries. Play the white land here. And pass it back. So we won't be able to combo all the way next turn yet. Opponent's also gaining life, so if they get high enough, then uh, Colossification may not be enough to combo with Heralds if our opponent's at more than 23. Blessing to shuffle cards back, okay. Guess that's not the end of the world, would have been a lot more bag breaking had they shuffled back a Colossification and speak of the devil. So yeah, can I wait and maybe do it all next turn? I would require a land for that to work, so I don't think we can really wait. Okay, and then I could seize the spoils, discard growth, or we can pass and careful cultivation. Don't think it really matters. Discarding growth means our opponent can gain a bunch of life and we still kill them with Herald. Bolas a Citadel, alright, makes a lot of sense. Powerful Curve Topper and Innkeeper can make the life back to keep comboing. Hopefully they just hit a land pocket here. Another Jade Light, gains three. And they can uh, keep digging for more spells they can cast. Gilded Goose essentially gains them life up to 24. Another Jade Lights is neutral in terms of life, but gets to dig pretty deep. And another Innkeeper now too. Alright, hopefully there's a land on top. They can also just activate Citadel now to deal 10 damage to me. Luckily not enough for lethal. Double land with a Jade Light Explorer. And our opponent's at 29 now. Okay, so next turn we're certainly dead to a Citadel activation, but let's see if we can steal the win here with a Storm Herald. Could even Discovery discarding double cultivation just to add even more power to the Herald. And then now play Heralds, get all those Auras back. Thirty-two power. We have to tap it, but we can thud for thirty-two. All right, this was close. 
opponents in disbelief. They can sack 10 to put us to 5. But, uh, yeah, that's not going to be enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw here with a keepable hand, I think. Cultivation setting up a turn 4 Donatha with Calcification. Hopefully there's no interaction to remove it. Facing Yorion. Okay, now we can discard Calcification times 2 if we'd like. Wondering if I still prefer Cultivation on turn 2. Nah, let's Reunion. Back of Donatha is good to have. And then we could potentially wait until 6 mana to Donatha plus Thud, depending on the situation here. Can discover a discard growth. I think I prefer going for Cultivation, so we can maybe just cast the Donatha next turn. Opponent on a 4 color deck with a Spiritual Companion now at long last. Keeps up 2 mana. So there could be some removal here. Get to untap. And yeah, we'll try Donatha. Get back Calcification. If it fails, we can try again next turn with the Thud. And could even Heart Casts Growth to give Donatha Trample to get past the Companion. So that's the advantage of actually having green in our mana base, so we can Heart Cast some of our enchantments. Omen can deal two. We'll finish off our Monk. Glad they didn't do it beforehand, although they might be setting up a sacrifice effect for Donatha. And yeah, Trial of Ambition, so Donatha down. And now we don't have the mana to Donatha plus Thud, so kind of the perfect answers here. Now I'll probably wait until we have enough mana to set up the instant kill, so we play around another Trial of Ambition or a Flicker effect. So we'll discard double growth. And I really just want to hit my land drop. So... I can either Reunion or I guess Seize the Spoils will do it too, since that'll make a treasure. Discard Reunion and then keep a backup Donatha seems safest. Okay, so next turn we should have the mana to set up the combo with Thud. Instant speed interaction could still interfere. Opponent potentially an Enigmatic Incarnation deck, so if they play it here, they could actually exile my graveyard by searching up a 3-drop. Like Callous Blood Mage comes to mind as a pretty versatile 3-mana creature. Just a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Alright, I think we're in the clear now. Play Donatha. Get back our plus 20, plus 20 classification. And for single white. Ooh, Leyline Binding, never mind. Okay. Opponent had enough of uh, domain here to exile Donatha. So we'll have to try again next turn. And hopefully they're out of answers. Another Leyline Binding, I guess, will be pretty rough. Opponent discarding a Renegade Rallier certainly points towards Enigmatic Incarnation. Fall to 15. And yeah, there's the Incarnation, so probably gonna exile our graveyard now. So we'll have to top deck another classification to put in play with Donatha from our hand. That's rough. Never mind, just a Clothus. That's not gonna do it. Okay. Donathan number three for the win. There we go. 
Awesome. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. We've got basically all the combo pieces we need, and even a cultivation for a bit of ramp. Opponent on a blue deck. Alright, so next turn sees the spoils. Opponent on a mill deck could actually help us out here. If they milled a classification and we drew a red source, we might have been able to already kill them turn three. Alright, let's discard our classification. And probably no need to discovery here. Keep my treasure. And then next turn we could already have lethal. So hopefully they tap out instead of keeping up counterspell mana. Bonan Mills, Storm Herald, and Donitha, so they certainly know what's up, but they go for an impulse, so only one mana left means they could still have a bound spell for Storm Herald if they respond to the trigger. But once the auras are attached, we can thud, and there's no way our opponent can really respond. So let's give this a shot. Might have wanted to tap the monk in case we need to discovery afterwards. The tap trigger from Colossification does still give them a window to potentially respond once the auras are already on the battlefield before we can cast our sorcery speed thud. That's one of the drawbacks compared to Fling, which is a two mana instant. Could technically float mana with Storm Herald in response, for what it's worth. Could be relevant if we had a second classification in the graveyard, opponent goes to bounce, and then we can replay Storm Herald thanks to the extra mana, and still cast a thud afterwards. Can pay for spell pierce. So everything's taken into account. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is missing a discard outlet, I suppose. It's also a little slow with double garden, but I think it's still got enough potential that we should keep. An untapped land means turn two cultivation, which gets us close to a turn four Donatha to put growth in play. Another garden. All right. Opponent with a Mox Amber. So it could be a combo deck as well, as we see in Emery. For now, play land and pass. Briefcase, also a good combo with Emery. And can also be part of an infinite combo where they replayed over and over. Untapping Emery with a Paradox Engine. To make infinite one ones. Emery doesn't really have anything exciting to get back, so it's just going to hit for one. Okay, so hopefully dodge a Paradox Engine here. And then we can play Donitha if we'd like. That seems fine, since we're not setting up Colossification for the one-hit KO. So I might need to attack and then uh, thud afterwards to finish them off. There's a Paradox Engine, so that's scary. So are we dead? Emery with double Mox Amber means they can keep on tapping everything, make infinite mana. So that's probably game over. Prototype can make more mana. So it's just about whether they have something to win the game with. And a Karn will certainly search that up. Alright, GG's. Opponent can find Reservoir, cast infinite Mox Ambers, gain infinite life, and uh, deal 50 damage to us. Otherwise we might have been able to get there next turn. Maybe without all the tap lands we would have been a turn faster. But a good draw from the Paradox Engine deck. Opponent just has to replay Mox Amber repeatedly. 
and a soaring city just to rub it in. All right, is our opponent gonna go for it? There we go, Mox Amber. And it's not gonna take too long here for Reservoir to kill us. Opponent going for the briefcase as well. Doesn't matter too much which uh, artifact they get back at this point. Opponent up to 39, so two more spells will do it. And there's a 50 damage coming up. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Discard double growth turn two, and then we could be attacking for 17 on turn three. That seems worthwhile even though it will exile the double growth here. Lots of Storm Heralds. Could also keep digging until we find a thud to make sure we one-hit KO the opponent. Since my next turn's not going to be all that exciting, I'll just be playing uh, Seize the Spoils most likely. So maybe it is worth it to wait and either find thud or more Auras to discard. Opponent on a green-white artifact deck with a drawbridge, okay. Cultivation we can discard as an extra plus one power on Storm Herald. Doesn't seem particularly necessary here. So we'll discovery again, discard cultivation Storm Heralds. And there's classification, okay. So now we can Reunion, discard, classification, cultivation, and then we just need a thud to end the game. Otherwise, Donatha getting back classification could also be a valid play. Not sure what the opponent's plan is here with the drawbridge. Potion of healing, that's fine. And Smith can hit us for three. Another Donatha. Yeah, I guess we'll go for Donatha here. Get back classification. And then next turn Storm Heralds could go for the uh, various growths and cultivations to attack right away. A lurking roper, that's probably part of some infinite combo here. For now, Storm Herald, or we could cycle Garden, I guess we could do both. Let's go for Storm Heralds. So if we just put all the auras on Storm Herald itself, our opponent could chum block and survive, but now we can just put the Prodigious Growth on Donathai instead, since we're allowed to put it on a different creature as well, and then we should be able to trample over for lethal. Attack with Donatha. And 40 power of trample should be enough. Three lives, not gonna save them. But yeah, feel free to let me know in the comments what type of combo this deck might be trying to pull off with Lurking Roper. 
But for now, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems quite promising. Turn to Discovery, and now with a Colossification, it's even better. Of course, Donathan not as fast as a uh, Herald would be. Facing Sultai Kicker, and there's Heralds, okay. So that will speed things up significantly. Discard our two Auras. And then we're setting up a turn 4 kill with Herald and Thud. Bone probably playing into the Royal as potential interaction. And Aroost of Drakes can start making tokens. For now, seize the spoils if we'd like. And discard uh, Reunion. Next turn we could technically play Donitha as well. But we'll see what the opponent does. Alright, they keep up all their mana. So they probably have a bounce spell at the ready at the very least. But uh, yeah, I'm still not opposed to trying Storm Heralds. And then if they... Bounce it in response. We can just reset and try again next turn. And there's the blink. Alright, so submit zero, play a tap land and pass, even though we could thrilling discovery, don't think that's necessary. So that bottom one turn. And let's try again. It's gonna be an inscription to fight this time. Alright. So going for Donitha might have worked out better. Submit zero. And uh, now do I want a Discovery just to gain two? Sure. And then next turn Donatha should still do it, assuming they're out of interaction. Drawing three lands is a little awkward in case they do have more interaction here. Would have been better off keeping one of the looting effects. Just wanted to make sure I had enough mana for Donatha plus a thud in case something bad happened to my treasure. Okay, opponent taps out for Sproutling. So the life gain of Inscription was actually quite relevant, opponent at 23. So if they gained a little bit more life, Donatha would not have been enough here since we can only deal 24 damage at most. But this should do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and needs a creature, but uh, we have lots of looting effects. Can discard growth, so I'll give it a shot. And then I can discard Growth and probably a Seize the Spoils to the first Discovery. Being on the play, always a nice perk. Put on blue reds, maybe Gates. And we'll play this on red. Alright, can discard Calcification now and then we're just missing either Storm Heralds or Donatha, ideally with the Thud. So we'll try that. Another growth. And yeah, opponent does indeed seem like a gate synergy deck. We'll just keep cycling through the deck. At this point I wonder if I should Discovery first, although we can still do it afterwards with our treasure. And definitely don't need all these lands. Alright, hopefully we find some action. That's not it. A land and double cultivation, so... Okay, luckily there's Donathan to the rescue. And then I'll probably go for 
the Colossification, since they might have a Gates Ablaze to deal quite a bit of damage. Probably still not enough to kill through a Growth, but might as well go big here. 24-24. Can certainly beat a Gatebreaker Ram in a fight. It's going to be a Golos, which will be on Chum Blocking Duty. And we'll see what lands they find here. There's going to be another Gate. And I guess it doesn't hurt to keep digging before attacking, in case we find something that gives us lethal. Alright, there we go. Thud will do it. Can attack first, just to get that satisfying 24 damage. And then uh, Thud will close out the game. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Gigantha deck. Our hand seems fine. Can discard Growth and Calcification, waiting for Storm Herald and Danitha. Well, let's see what we're up against. Black Red could be a sacrifice deck. Thud's always welcome. So now we just need a Storm Herald to set up a turn 4 kill. Discard both of these. Don't think our opponent's likely to be on Rakdos mid-range, since they typically don't get to play Gigantha's companion. And yeah, just Gigantha to hand, opponent looking like a sacrifice deck. So for now, seize the spoils, discarding growth once again. Look for a Storm Herald or Danitha. And at least we're not under any immediate pressure, so we have time to sculpt the perfect hand. For mana, what's next? Targnar? Alright, never mind. I guess their opponent might be a Bard class combo deck instead. Alright, still nothing, so we'll seize. And then I may also end up cycling gardens. Alright, there's Storm Herald, although I'm one mana short of actually killing with Thud. So, just play this tapped, I suppose. And then we can go for it next turn. You can always make a 1-1 one -one chum blocker if really necessary. Bone finds Soul of Windgrace. So yeah, unless our opponent combos off out of nowhere here with a Bard class, we should be safe. And then I don't expect too much instant speed interaction if they are indeed on a Bard class deck. Opponent just animating a den. So that should be game. Take six. And Helm of the Hosts is not gonna get a time to shine here. 44 power and a thud for the win. Could have even just attacked without getting classification, and I'm pretty sure we still had lethal here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And yeah, we can maybe finally see Helm of the Host in action here with Donatha. This hand has the tools it needs. Turn to discard Helm and Growth. Up against the blue-green high toughness, it looks like. Okay, so a big lifelinking Danitha might be enough to win the game. Just need to make sure we keep hitting our land drops, ideally find some ramp. Turn to drawbridge. So for now... No damage yet, but that's soon gonna happen. Discard some shock lands. Okay. So it's gonna be a turn 5, Danatha. Slower than I would have liked. Let's see if they have something to enable their creatures. High alert, yeah, take 9. And we could be dead to a pump spell next turn, increasing their creature's toughness. Not much I can do, just Reunion, discard Land and Growth, and then next turn I could uh, finally play Donitha. Okay, I guess we can still gain two, which might make a difference. So now if they go for Tower Defense, we would take 19 still. Looks like they're going for more creatures instead. They can give it haste. 
And we fall to five. And there's Storm Heralds. All right. I guess Storm Heralds could do it. How many growths do we have? Two. So we can just play it, attack, and then thud afterwards. As much as I wanted to see Danitha plus Helm of the Host, which honestly could also stabilize us here. Let's just go for the uh, more likely way to kill. Double growth, attack for 17. And then we still had a thud for 17 more. All right, so we got to see our Naya combo deck in action. And yeah, it seems to be working pretty well. I don't think it's quite good enough to bring it to the ranked ladder. If you're going to be facing decks with turn one Thoughtseize, that's going to be pretty rough. There's also various counterspell decks like Mono Blue Spirits that just need one or two well-placed counterspells and your whole plan falls apart. And as far as graveyard combo decks, I think Grease Fang is probably still the more consistent and powerful combo deck that can already go off on turn 3, even if it's not a one-hit KO, just seems like a faster combo deck in the format. And then once you expand to best of 3, people will be prepared with a lot of graveyard hate because of Grease Fang existing. So I don't think it's necessarily going to cut it for competitive play, but definitely a ton of fun if you just want to see big numbers and thud the opponent for lethal. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.